Hello everyone, this is Deb McBride and welcome to my astrology podcast. Today is Tuesday, December 11th, 2018 and I am broadcasting from beautiful Costa Rica where it is evening, it is a beautiful cool evening and the crickets are chirping and it's very pleasant here, so very peaceful. So in this peaceful moment, I'm here to tell you about the astrology of the week. So we've had some interesting aspects in the last few days. First of all, Mercury went direct last Thursday, as we discussed last week. And that was a real relief considering planets have been retrograde for months and months and months, the inner planets. And we've really been having quite a time with backwards motion. And now we're finally able to sort of psychologically move forward, especially mentally. So Mercury's moved pretty quickly in the last few days because it retrograded, it stationed direct at 27 degrees of Scorpio. And tomorrow it goes into Sagittarius again. It goes back into Sag where it was before the retrograde began. And so it went retrograde on the 16th of November in the evening. And it's hard to believe that that three weeks has already passed and now it's going back into Sag again. Where it retrograded in Sag was 13 degrees, and here we are um, going to experience Mercury in Sag again tomorrow, which is a better place for Mercury because it's a little more um, energetic and fiery, and I know it's opposite Gemini, and Mercury rules Gemini, and it's really not the best place for Mercury, but I think it's better than a Scorpio. So that's my opinion. Um, <laughs> uh, Mercury will go to 13 degrees of Sagittarius on Christmas Eve, December 24th. So we only have really another 12, 13 days before Christmas Eve. And it's hard to believe, yes. But um, this is what we call the shadow period. So Mercury is now uh, moving through the area where it was before it went retrograde. So, and then after it went retrograde, so it went backwards through this whole, these first three, first bunch of degrees, 13 degrees of Sagittarius. So when it's stationed at 13 Sag on the 17th, the 16th of November, it was moving backwards, backwards, and through Sagittarius rather quickly, I must say, because it moves through 13 degrees of Sag and then three degrees of Scorpio. So it really went 16 degrees. Um, backwards. And now we'll see it come forward. And tomorrow evening, New York time or Eastern time, 6.43 PM, the Mercury will go into Sagittarius. So that's actually really good. Um, so we're going to get out of this kind of swampy thing that I said last week, we were going to start having again. Venus is going to be there for a while. So Venus is going to stay in Scorpio for a while. She will next week on Monday, move out of her shadow. So she'll start to go into a new territory after Monday because that 10 degree point where she went retrograde back in October, on October 5th, Venus will move past the 10 degrees once we get to Tuesday of next week. So we have another week of Venus sort of being in her shadow place. So moving out of shadows, moving into, you know, forward moving action, um, it's a good thing as opposed to retrograde and backwards moving action. So what we're looking at now is we've just had the Mars Neptune conjunction, which was, you know, pleasant and healing and um, not exactly the most aggressive aspect for Mars, <laughs> especially since Mars is in Pisces, but really it's been more of a, uh, more of a sensitive move through the back door, move slowly, gently in, in your dealings with, with anything you want to sort of initiate. Now, um, what we've got is we've got the moon in Aquarius right now. It's been in Aquarius since 6.39 PM like yesterday at Eastern standard time. And before that over the weekend it was in Capricorn. Now every month the moon goes through all the signs, but when it goes through Capricorn lately, it is definitely in between Saturn and Pluto at a point when it's traveling through Capricorn. So right now, Saturn is at eight degrees of Capricorn and Pluto is at 19 degrees of Capricorn and they're both moving forward. 
and that's about an 11 degree difference, give or take a few minutes, and there's a real challenge in that 11 degrees when the moon moves onto Saturn and in that sort of corridor, that tunnel, till it reaches the 1920 degrees where Pluto is. And it really will move through a sort of what we call a besieged area. So this is when the moon is besieged, meaning it's sort of hemmed in by Saturn on one end and Pluto on the other. And that's not fun, <laughs> but it is a lesson and it uh, helps us develop our navigational skills as far as our emotions are concerned. So if you feel that you are emotionally not yourself when you experience a Capricorn moon and with Saturn here and Pluto there, um, then you are waking up to something. Now, Saturn and Pluto are going to come close together next year, and we're going to have some interesting stories about that as we proceed through 2019 and 2020. But what we have to learn to do is sort of work with this energy because it's not, you know, easy, flowing, gentle, fun energy. It's not party energy. It's, you know, hard work. It's Capricorn. It's always work and and duty and responsibility, but always a gain in the end. Capricorns don't work just for the sake of working. Um, Capricorn energy is not just about the sake of working. It's about means to an end because Capricorn is an earth sign and Saturn is an earth planet. And we have this opportunity to create something tangible from this work. So it's not like, you know, you don't have a fun afternoon when you got Saturn and Pluto. What you've got is, you know, time to generate some good uh, responsibility and, and work. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to be awful. <laughs> it just means that we have to navigate our emotions differently because the moon is our emotions. It's who we are. It's the moon's place that sort of guides our mood for that day or the week. And the moon's position between Saturn and Pluto can make us feel like we're not achieving enough, that we're not uh, gaining enough, that it's not happening fast enough, that what am I going to do? I feel sort of bereft about this. What happens is it moves to Saturn, which can be kind of a, a wet blanket. And then, you know, where you feel that I'm not gaining enough, I'm not moving enough, I'm not changing enough. Then you get to Pluto, where Pluto is, hey, let's transform. So let's move this energy into a place where we can transform it and change it and use some alchemy to shift what we're feeling. So the idea is if you, you're going to come against your own unconscious, subconscious brick wall once when the moon hits Saturn, wherever that is in your chart. And so you're going to feel like, ah, why should I continue there? You might, you know, it might be something really simple. Um, it could be, you know, that you're trying to get the house painted or something simple like that. Or it could be something very esoteric and, and uh, sort of existential in your life. And then you go to Pluto and you figure out a way to rise above it, transform it, transcend it, and create something new. Because Pluto is a very creative energy. Now, what is going to happen is you're going to run into some frustrations and things, and then you're going to figure out how to handle it, how to unravel the frustration. You don't just sit in the frustration, you figure out how to transform it. So this is actually very good because it's teaching us where well, there's a lesson in all of this is teaching us how to really gain our mastery and Capricorn is our mastery because Capricorn is the natural ruler of the 10th house. And when we are gaining our mastery, we are learning and growing and shifting and changing and we're getting experience and you don't get really valuable experience unless you do some hard work and you get some, get some ideas about how you want to proceed. So, what happens here is that, you know, Pluto's, Pluto's been in Capricorn for 10 years and we've got another good 
maybe eight years of it in Capricorn, seven, eight years of it in Capricorn. So we got, we've got some time here. But Pluto is the transformation planet, and wherever Capricorn is is where your mastery is and where you're supposed to be transforming that area of your life and what you're good at. So if Pluto's in a creative house for you, like the fifth house, maybe you are experiencing a transcendence of old creative habits that are creating something wonderful and new for you. And that's what Pluto's expecting of us for these next years and what we've been doing for the last 10 years is that Pluto's expecting us to really get our game on as far as what we do and how good we are at it and how to make that happen. And with Saturn there, it just gives us the extra push. It's Whenever I think of the two of them together, I think of you will transform. You don't have a choice. You have to, there's no choice. You can't go backwards. You got to go forwards. You can't succumb to fear you can't succumb to anxiety you just got to go okay i've, I've got to push through this and allow yourself a few moments <laughs> to work through that and then push through it and we are going to be reminded of this every month and now they're going to get closer next year they're going to get a lot closer the planet saturn and pluto and we have to just get up on our game and you know connect with our mastery on a very profound level and not have outrageous expectations of ourselves, not have, you know, moments where we're so hard on ourselves we don't get anything done, but where we have reasonable growth and reasonable traction and progress. You know, Saturn is all about you know, making something concrete, and so is Capricorn. So we really want to see something concrete come out of the Saturn Pluto. Um, if, if nothing else, a, a concrete way to transform our lives. So that's what we're going to feel every month. We're going to start talking about next month when I talk next week because there's some big stuff next month. So when we move into Aquarius, like we did last night, the moon, it shifts our attitude and our energy, and then we start wanting to be around groups and people, and we start looking at our long-term goals and our what we want to accomplish. and and what we um, kind of community we want to serve and who we want to serve. So that's, that's a really good reminder of how it shifts when the moon shifts out of Capricorn and we're really focused on that mastery. Then we move into Aquarius. And where am I going to take that mastery? Where am I going to bring that mastery? Where in the world am I going to show that to what group, to what community? What are my long-term goals for this process? And Aquarius is much more... Uh, irreverent in the sense that it doesn't, it's not as serious. It can be a bit contrary, but with Aquarius moon, we feel like we're getting something really, um, we're getting something accomplished and it's a little lighter. The energy is going to be a little lighter when the moon moves into Aquarius because we're not dealing with outer planets in Aquarius. So as we move through today, um, we had some nice aspects to, with the moon to Venus and the moon to Jupiter. And tomorrow, the 12th, we're going to have a very nice sextile of the moon to the sun because the sun is in Sagittarius. And as I mentioned earlier, Mercury is going back into Sagittarius tomorrow, 6.43 p.m. Eastern time. So on Thursday, we have the moon going into Pisces. So it's phase, you know, about two and a half days in the sign. So it will go void, of course, at 5.20 a.m. Eastern Time. And then it's going to be going into Pisces at 7.40 a.m. Eastern Time. So this is going to be a very short void. And the moon will be very pleasant as it makes aspect to Venus and Uranus. And it will be a very uh, sort of progressive kind of moon. But remember, Mars is in Pisces. Neptune's in Pisces, and as of Thursday morning, the moon will be in Pisces. So, as I said last month, <laughs> try to stay sober. <laughs> um, on Friday the 14th, the moon is going to be in Pisces conjunct both Neptune and Mars. So it's going to hit Neptune first because it's earlier, because Mars will have moved along. And that will be 11.30 in the morning, Eastern Time. And then it will hit Mars at 9.19 p.m. So Eastern time. So this is actually kind of funny. We're, we're really watching the moon uh, hit those two planets and 
no one is going to have any energy for work that day. <laughs> Everyone's going to want to go to sleep. So um, try not to overindulge. Try to be focused in your day if you can be. Um, the moon will make a sextile, but it'll be in the middle of the night. The sextile is Saturn. And just sort of just sort of go with the flow. That's all you can do is go with the flow with the moon and Pisces and you know hitting Neptune and Mars. Um, it is a good time to go to a party. <laughs> but please be careful at that party. Have a good time, you know, be charitable, be lovely, don't get inebriated. <laughs> Um, Saturday, the moon will go into Aries, but it's going to be void all day in Pisces. So the moon in Pisces, all day Saturday, void is really a day to sleep, watch movies. Um, I would not, I know it's going to be a big Christmas shopping day, but I would say if you're really looking for a hard gift for somebody, Somebody that, you know, it's going to be difficult to get their gift. Don't do it Saturday. Do it Sunday. <laughs> um, it's void from 6.49 a.m. Eastern time to 7.44 p.m. Uh, when it goes into Aries Eastern time. So that is a 13-hour. It's a 13-hour void moon. So that's pretty intense I would, and in Pisces, and I'm getting tired just thinking about it. <laughs> so do your basic chores that day. Do your grocery shopping, you know, your errands, your, your exercise, whatever you do. But that's, that's just a lazy, kind of a lazy day. Don't expect much. And, you know, the other thing is, it's not that a void moon is bad. It's just maybe not productive in a day-to-day -day level. Sometimes things start on a void moon. Of course, people are born on a void moon. And things don't go as you expect them to. Um, and I may have said this before. I landed in Costa Rica for the very first time on a void moon. I had a Mercury retrograde. I thought I was going on vacation. I didn't know it was going to change my life. So that is a really good example of how you don't know what to expect when, you, when things happen on a void moon. I didn't have control over the dates that we picked to travel. So I just went with everyone else and because normally I wouldn't start a new trip on a void moon. <laughs> but I guess you have to have the element of surprise when you do have a void moon and things turn to a different way than you expected them to. So there's your example of a void moon. Um, so on Sunday, we're going to get a nice sextile of Venus to Saturn. And that should be very productive. That's Sunday morning. So Sunday's a little more productive if you want to get things done. And it is really a, a good Aries moon day where it's we're focused and we're moving, you know, with action and intention. And even though the Aries moon is ruled by Mars now, which is in Pisces. So kind of goes back to Pisces again. Monday the 17th, we are going to have a Mars sextile Pluto, which is very powerful and very productive and very initiating. And that's a really good place because, you know, like I said, Mars is in Pisces. It's not the most ambitious place for Mars. It's not the most comfortable place for Mars. But when it sextiles Pluto, it's going to get a good zap from the planet of transformation in order for us to really work with that energy. So, you know, what I said about coming in through the back door, when you have Mars and Pisces, you don't initiate, you don't do a direct hit. You kind of initiate subtly and smoothly and in that watery flowing way because we're dealing with Pisces. And just make sure that you don't offend anyone or directly hit anyone because when, when Mars is in Pisces, we don't really feel, we know what we're asserting ourselves at. We, we act, we, we take action, we make assertions, and then we don't necessarily, um, we don't necessarily gain anything when Mars is in Pisces because it kind of evaporates. Mars, you know, when it moves through that fog, that Piscean fog, it feels like it's just sort of diminishes or evaporates. So go with the flow, go in the back door, find where the water is flowing and go that way. Don't resist it. Um, 
And so the moon is still in Aries on Monday. So the moon will be in Aries the evening of Saturday, all day Sunday, all day Monday, and then change in the middle of the night before it comes to Tuesday. Now, the other thing is that since we move back into all the Scorpio energy, remember again, Mercury and Venus are pointing at Pluto, which is then pointing at Saturn. So that's a little tedious. Um, but once Mercury moves out of Scorpio on tomorrow and moves into Sagittarius, then when we've got um, Mercury, the Sun, Jupiter, all in Sagittarius, and they're all pointing at Jupiter. And so that's going to make things a little lighter again. Um, Mars is pointing at Neptune, which is in its own sign. Saturn's in its own sign, so anything pointing at Saturn, which is Pluto, and Venus, Venus is in Scorpio, pointing at Pluto, and pointing to Saturn. So it's disposed of by Saturn. So the big dispositions are really Jupiter and Saturn, and they are an interesting, and Neptune to a degree, but they are an interesting uh, combination. Uranus is back in Aries, so Mars is going to point to um, Uranus. It's pointing to Pisces, but, but Uranus points to Mars. Sorry, Uranus points to Mars, which then points to Neptune. So we really do have like this whole Neptune, Saturn, Jupiter thing going on. And so it's interesting because Jupiter and Neptune are very much uh, in sort of in the same realm. And Neptune can be very, um, uh, you know, spiritual and um, creative, but Jupiter brings more fortune. They're both spiritual planets. They both rule Pisces, or Jupiter was the original ruler of Pisces. But Jupiter and Neptune can be a whole other experience of, um, you know, uh, of experience of spirituality and, and hope and faith in, in a very big way. So, and then there's Saturn, which is the antithesis of that. Saturn's reality. Saturn wants to see the fact. Saturn wants proof. So we are having a bit of uh, maybe an existential moment where part of us wants to see the proof and the other part of us wants to really believe and have hope and faith in what we're feeling and sensing and, and discerning from our intuition. Now, this is a very interesting combination because if many of the planets are pointing at Jupiter and then a bunch of other planets are pointing at Neptune and then a bunch of other planets are pointing at Saturn, then what we're, we're split in these three ways where we have to balance Saturn with Jupiter and Neptune. Now, they are very different. And like I said, Saturn's energy is very conservative, practical, responsible, and wants to see proof and wants to see, you know, I, I need to see the proof. Everything else is pointing towards faith. Everything else is saying, you got to hang in there. Even if it doesn't look right in the moment, you've got to hang in there. You have to have faith. You have to watch, you know, things unfold. You have to believe in it. You have to keep going. Um, and of course, we don't have a chance. We don't have any other chance. We have to keep going. So we don't have a choice. And Saturn says, what makes you believe that what you believe or you feel or your intuition is telling you is going to work out? So we have to kind of use Saturn in the, okay, I'm going to be cautious about this and keep working hard and keep focused on what I'm doing. But you have to have the faith. And the lesson right now is about how much faith and how much belief in who we are and what we do and what supports us, the, our support system. It's so important right now to know your support system, know your faith, know what you believe in, and don't waver from that. Um, so you can use Saturn to stay focused and grounded while you believe what you believe, um, you know, in, intuitively. And you can use Saturn to say, okay, I'm going to be committed in the Saturn sense in that I'm going to be committed to what I believe in and commit to my faith and, and what my vision has been and what's my vision and why do I believe in it so strongly? Um, Saturn will also show you where your vision might be a little, um, you know, needing some more work. Maybe you need to 
if you need to really hone in on what that vision is. If you really need, maybe you don't know what your vision is. <laughs> and maybe you are having your vision, but you have to be, bring it into manifestation, into reality. So before you can manifest anything in life, you have to visualize it and believe it first. So it's like anything. It's, it's um, something was, might be coming to you and you don't even, you don't even know how you got it. Sometimes we're, we're manifesting all the time. Sometimes we're not aware of what we're manifesting. Sure, not great things happen. If you get a cold or you get the flu or you have an accident or something like that, you manifested it on a deep unconscious level, but why? Well, you don't want to take responsibility. No one wants to say, well, I got myself sick <laughs> um, or I got myself into trouble somewhere. But we have to look at our actions because all of our actions and all our decisions and all of our visions lead up to that point and that point of manifestation. So if we're manifesting all the time and Saturn wants us to manifest, then we have to take the vision that we have and the spiritual knowledge and the, the um, intuitions that we have. We have to trust our gut and we have to manifest what we're seeing. So be very careful right now what you wish for. Be very careful about um, what you want to manifest. Be very particular. Um, I've gotten really good at manifestation. <laughs> and the more you focus on something, the more you manifest it. So you want to make sure your focus and your thoughts are clear and clean. You don't want to be focused on the negative. You want to really focus on that positive, positive outcome and that you're going to manifest something good. This is a prime time to be doing that with all of this Pisces and Jupiter in Sagittarius energy, this is really prime time to be manifesting something because Saturn can make it concrete. So we got to use Saturn in the proper way as opposed to getting bummed out by Saturn, as opposed to letting Saturn be the wet blanket. We have to take all this other spiritual energy and channel it so that we can manifest it, so that we can hold it in our hand at the end of the day. This is going to be the rest of the month. You know, Mercury is going to go and sad to stay there. Venus is in Scorpio, going to stay there the rest of the month. Mars is going to stay in Pisces the rest of the month. Nobody's moving except the moon, of course, every couple of days. And the sun will switch signs next week at the solstice to Capricorn. So there's more manifestation. Okay? So we're working through this. We have to pay attention and read the signs and read the visualizations and trust your gut. And all of those things are easily manifested if we manage to, to keep moving forward and and trust what we're seeing so we take we take our magical energy our jupiter and our i know our sag and our neptune and our pisces and we transform it so that we can actually hold it in our hand if you have a dream you can manifest it and make it real so that's the point that is that is what we're doing right now so it's good to pay attention to that clean your thoughts make sure that you are um Make sure that you're focused on the right things. If you catch yourself ruminating on something that's not what you want or something that would be a bummer or something you're used to getting, it's always this disappointment. If you're used to that, you got to shift that now. That's this is the time to shift. So write down. It's really helpful to write down what you want to manifest and make sure you're clear on it and... Um, Make sure you are clear on that and make sure that you are reading it every day and tweaking it when necessary. I help my clients manifest all the time. Um, sometimes they're really amazed at what they can do, but it's their own power. I'm just showing them how to do it. It's their own power. They know how to do it. We all know how to do it. We do it all the time. So on that note, have a lovely week. Have a lovely weekend. Have a lovely couple of days ahead and enjoy Mercury going into Sagittarius. And enjoy whatever Christmas parties you're going to. Just be careful with that Neptunian energy and don't let it um, sort of bring you under. <laughs> and we'll be back next week as we discuss what's ahead with the solstice and the lunation of next weekend, which is the full moon. So that's going to be starting in a very important period. Thanks for listening. If you need to contact me, my email is deb at debmcbride.com. DebMcBride.com is my website where I write a blog, and I just wrote one the other day about all the interesting aspects we had over the weekend. 
my Instagram and my Twitter are at Deb Astrology, and I often give a lot of astrological advice on Instagram and a lot of um, little one minute videos. So you can check that out. I thank you for listening and have a good week.